Oh well, can't win them all. <sighs> oh yeah, and Jody Mills is in this. Remember when Jody Mills was an important character? Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 15 of Supernatural Season 5. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this Montreal just lost against the Tampa Bay Lightning at the time of the recording of this, I knew they weren't going to win, but I still had some hope. Oh well. Speaking of uh, false dreams and false realities, what would happen if you had a loved one who had died either violently or just unfortunately come back to life? Would you be freaked out? Or if they had nothing wrong with him other than being back from the dead would you rekindle those family connections or those connections whether it was a loved one a child or a family member would you do it this episode kind of asked that question i really didn't get it until the second time watching it i kind of watched it flash slash fell asleep the first time and then the second time it was kind of more so uh, tying into these themes sam and dean come to this town where a dead guy of five years gets up and kills this one dude which it's being narrated by a, is it like a discovery channel thing which i thought was kind of funny that was some good background humor somehow they don't realize that this is the same town that bobby is from because everyone in this town knows of bobby singer ergo jody mills who is introduced when the brothers are talking to this crazy guy who saw the dead man killed the person she is able to break their character very quickly and that's something that was right off the bat established about jody mills is that she had spunk instead of a give no shit she kind of more so had a take no shit kind of attitude i loved this aspect about her right off the bat whereas most characters trying to figuring out about the brothers like figuring out who they truly are you sometimes have like, an aversion to them she was fantastic right off the bat and it still amazes me that she had less than 20 episodes and she was such a memorable character despite that we then find out that she has had her son come back and bobby has had his wife come back and there is this morality conversation between the brothers and bobby about well she's a monster technically we should kill her but because they're normal and giving these people a second chance to rekindle these relationships they are on the fence about it but then things start to go wrong they start to eat people and then the episode turns into an actually a pretty kind of cool zombie movie jody watches her son eat her husband they start to get real with shit they have to start taking down these people it actually has some pretty dual uh, decent sequences particularly when bobby and dean are in bobby's uh, scrapyard and they're shooting all the zombies however is when they get into the house and it gets really desperate. It's kind of reminiscent of that of Night of the Living Dead. They get into the cupboard, and there's the joke about, well, at least these guys can't pick locks. And then they start doing it. It's like, are you tired of being this dumb? Dean, oddly enough, takes a quote from Indiana Jones with, hey, I'm making this up as I go. Fucking great. I love it. But then when the door opens, Sam and Jody kill the zombies, but they're all just standing in the doorway like this. They're not moving forward. It's weird. It looks very obvious once they start to take down the zombies. But then the episode ends with them t burning all the bodies and kind of leaving on this very somber note, as well as knowing that Death was sending a message to Bobby, specifically because he's helping the brothers. I thought this was a little odd, because I don't remember Bobby being this particularly important, or more so in the direct interest of heaven or hell or destiny itself i'm kind of on the fence about whether this is actually a confirmed thing because i am waiting for the conversation with death in episode 21 but give me guys his thoughts about that as well as what you guys are going to say about the next episode but in the end this episode's decent it's got a little bit of silliness here it's a decent zombie episode it's not a standout episode but it is a little bit more emotionally twined than one would expect of an episode like this so in the end i am going to give episode 15 a five out of seven and as always let's see what you guys had to say about this episode another horseman episode another great episode as a whole even though he doesn't appear this is clearly death's episode and much like famine they go all the way with the gore and the violence that comes with any good zombie story george romero would have been proud this episode also introduced jody mills as an excellent replacement for ellen 
and a beloved character as a whole. Oh, and Bobby uh, having a woman 25 years younger than for him than his wife. My man. Well, technically speaking, his wife is the same age as him. She's just been dead for 25 years, so you could you could swing and write that. Technically, yeah, you are right. This is obviously Death's episode. He doesn't make an appearance uh, outright, but he is in this episode as this is his one of his kind of his. Uh, apocalyptic deeds dead men was the seven out of seven for me it's in the top five for the seasons so let's get one plot hole out of the way right off the start i can understand lucifer not wanting to alienate sam more so instead of killing bobby outright he sends death on a mission to break his spirit so sam will lose his support but why does michael angels never catch the brothers at bobby's house don't they know all about him and their connection am i missing something yes i will admit the whole idea of sending a message to bobby I've always thought that was it's one of the odd it bits like kind of tacked on at the end of this episode. The Bobby focused episodes in season five, six, and seven were some of my favorites in the series. Quality writing, engaging drama, skillful directing, especially here. The episode has, the show has a very cool version of the zombie horror story, something that the final season had an opportunity to do at the beginning, but totally botched. Yes, it did. One of the few times Bobby gives the boys the runaround and actually works against them. The saddest thing is that Bobby isn't blinded by emotion. He just can't bring himself to face what he already knows he has to do. For one time appearance, Karen is a very memorable guest. Sorry to see her go so quickly and with Bobby's happy and her with Bobby's happiness. However, she will be back as a memory in season seven, and Bobby does go uh, get some decent closure with her then. Craig Mark plays the guy who asks Sam, uh, who is Sam, at the country jail, leading to him finding out Bobby is actually the town drunk. He can come back. He came back in season 14, episode 7, to play a cop who was killed by Nick's family. That's crazy. I'm actually not surprised, though. Like I said, I've said many times, uh, actors get reused in Supernatural quite often and over the longest and strangest span spans of time. Dead Man Wears Plaid is a very interesting take on the zombie apocalypse or Supernatural. I enjoy all the character interactions with each other, but I feel like the plot overall felt very tame when compared to the previous episode of the season. Although the introduction of Jody and how she becomes a hunter is very heartbreaking, I then realize my heart is shattered when Bobby delivers the line regarding his wife, she was the love of my life, how many times do I have to kill her? Yes, that's like, that is a freaking stomper of a line. It's interesting how death affected Sue Falls, primarily trying to get in touch with Bobby. It would have been a more interesting scene to see death stroll through the graveyard, raising the dead of those who live at Sook Falls, but I love that the character also has a presence we don't ultimately see in human personification in traditional supernatural fashion just yet. While it's not my favorite interpretation of zombie apocalypse, since it's only affected a town that's a typical supernatural standards for the show overall. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid was always my least favorite of the story episodes until somewhat recently when I had my fiance watch the first five seasons for the first time. This was easily her favorite episode of the season as she just lost her mom a few years back and it made her think about how she'd feel in the situation Bobby was put in and what she'd do. I'm the one who wrote the way too long of a comment about Sam's demon blood addiction and its parallels to real life re relatability to me and it got me thinking. That's a big part of what the show lost after season 5. There were a lot of episodes that really made you think, not in the sense of what's going on here, but from themes which invoke emotion and imagination, because the world felt real and almost grounded in a way. This episode is a prime example of that. From season 6 onward, the show started to feel more and more like a disconnected supernatural soap opera. Yes, that's a kind of exactly where it had to go, considering the conclusion of this season. The introduction of Jody will always be one of my favorite scenes of the show. She, her recognizing Bobby's voice is absolutely hilarious. I'll always be disappointed that she never got any full resolution at the end. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid is another really good episode. I love that we had no idea what was going on with the dead people coming back. We also learned a little more about Bobby and his past, which I really liked. Love that they only talk about death and we don't see him. It really builds him up as a powerful being able to raise the dead. The dead eventually turning was awesome too. Very good filler episode. Dead Man Wear Plaid is a great episode. I totally forgot that Jody was introduced in season five. I really love seeing her in this episode. I felt so sorry for her when she finds her son has turned into a zombie and is eating her husband. Once again, she has to lose her son and now her husband in one horrible night. And then there's Bobby. I really love seeing the, uh, the softer side of him in an episode once again. Jim Beaver did an amazing performance here, along with Carrie Ann Fleming, who plays his wife. It reminds me of how John saw Mary in the 300th episode. To me, I especially love the scene between them just before Bobby shot her. I really like seeing Karen. I like what she says to Dean 
that he ne- he has never been in love before. Yeah, no, she has a very significant ep- uh, impact on this episode, and she was very well acted. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid episode is basically about dead people coming back to life and are nice at the beginning and then turn into not-so-nice undead people. At first, I thought this was going to be a fun zombie episode, then Bobby's wife shows up, and I knew this wasn't going to have a happy ending. But I didn't think it would go that quite so dark, depressing, and bloody. The scene where the sheriff discovers her recently undead son mulching on her husband's stomach has to be one of the sickiest, stickiest scenes that the show has ever done. Uh, Also, making an episode about zombies on network television that actually scares you and moves you is no easy task. This one got to me. I actually jumped when the gun went off and we knew Bobby had killed his wife again. Overall, a great episode, but kind of predictable. The zombie action kicks in at the exact moment I predicted it to start. However, the writing is pretty good and the scares are still there, so I have to give this episode a 6 out of 7. Finally, last one here. The only thing I'll say about Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, it's bringing back old characters done right. Andrew Dabb and the other writers of season 15 should have taken notes on this episode. (laughs) These character comebacks help move the story and are part of the story, not just thrown in for no rhyme or reason. Like a certain season. Well, okay, admittedly having Meg come back as the MT was brilliant, but that's the only one. It was great seeing the original Meg actress again. It was especially fun seeing Agent Henriksen again and him describing his death in great detail. Edit, wrong episode. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, I think we're going off on, we're going back to ghosts again. I love the introduction of Jodie Mills in this one. Up until season 12, she was one of my favorite characters. She was the mother Sam and Dean deserved. The zombie concept in this episode was great. The actor at the beginning who was shot is Scott McNeil, a very well-known and hilarious voice actor. The one really gross scene that I still cannot watch is when Sam fights a zombie woman and she drools into his mouth. Yuck. Thank you guys for your comments, and now we're going to talk about an episode that definitely has some different connotations now, especially with how the show ended. Dark Side of the Moon, the episode where the brothers actually get to go to heaven. Very interesting conversation. We're going to have some cool conversations about that episode. So give me your guys' comments about those, and we'll talk about that in the next review. Otherwise, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.